Hi there, so if you've watched my channel before, you know I'm pretty obsessed with ChatGPT. And recently I've really become obsessed with how ChatGPT can help people learn. Uh, I'm a instructor at Kwantlen Polytechnic University. I teach journalism and data visualization. And I've been playing around a lot with how ChatGPT can help people to study, can help answer questions about course content. Uh, and I'm also the dad of two teenage boys. And so I've been sort of experimenting with how ChatGPT can be helpful um, in them studying for uh, their course content. And I recently had a situation with my eldest son where he was kind of struggling in his social studies class. He failed a couple of tests and was really trying to figure out a better strategy uh, for preparing for those tests. And I started to wonder whether ChatGPT could help him study. Um, one of the things that uh, educators know, uh, but not everyone else does, is that the typical way people study, which is sort of just to read through their course materials, is actually a really bad way to study. It makes you think you know the course material, but you don't really know if you know the course material. The best way uh, to study is to practice taking a test, have people ask you questions, see if you can recall the course material, um, or to discuss um, course material with people in an interactive setting, which is why study groups are often so effective. But I was wondering whether ChatGPT could recreate those two aspects of studying, quizzing um, my son on his course content and having discussions with him about the course content to see if he was prepared for it or not. Uh, and to my delight, I figured out that ChatGPT could do that and actually did it pretty well. And he went from failing his social studies test to getting pretty decent marks, 70s and 80s. So I wanted to walk you through uh, the steps that I found really helpful for achieving this. They're relatively straightforward, relatively simple, but not always as obvious uh, as they could be. Uh, so the first step is course content, right? So what are you supposed to know uh, for your upcoming test. Uh, you might have a textbook, you might have course handouts. Um, if the course materials that you have are already electronic, so maybe it's like an, uh, an electronic textbook in PDF format or you've been given handouts in PDF format, you can upload those directly uh, to ChatGPT and it can do a pretty good job of it. But very often you might have just paper documents um, or a paper textbook um, and there's a particular chapter that you need to uh, familiarize yourself with um, that's when you've got to create your own electronic version of that course content um, and doing that in the right way is going to make for a much more effective um, chat gpt experience when it goes to quiz you on the course content so i'm going to walk you through the steps of how to do that Okay, so you can use uh, a variety of different uh, software scanning tools to scan your documents, but I really like uh, Microsoft's Lens. Uh, it's really intuitive, um, works really well for converting multiple image files into a PDF. Um, when you open it, you just get a nice um, sort of page that looks like this, and you can just sort of put the first page into the window here, click on Capture, Right, make sure it looks okay, click on confirm, click on the uh, add button in the bottom left hand corner to add another page, Right, go to the next page, capture, right, and you just keep on doing that for all the pages. It seems a bit tedious, but the you know more experience you get with it, the more fast it goes. It's pretty good about um, automatically recognizing kind of where the boundaries of the page are, which is great. Keep on doing that. Once you're done, you've done all the pages, you just click on that little um, red arrow there, say that you're ready, that you're done, and then you can save it as a PDF and just save it to your iPhone storage. And then from here, you can click on the most recent document. So you just click on the share button, you just email it to yourself, and then you got the PDF and you're ready to go to the next step. Okay, so now what you've got is um, a PDF, but it's basically just a series of pictures. Um, the PDF itself doesn't have any information about the text and um, ChatGPT sometimes can interpret some words in pictures, but it's not particularly good at it and it's gonna kind of slow down what you're gonna to try to do next. So we wanna kind of make sure that ChatGPT is gonna be easily able to understand the text that is in our document. This is a, an example of um, some text that I used with my son uh, about Hitler and Mussolini and World War II. Um, and what you can see is if I click on some of the words in here, it just tries to select the whole page because it's just an image. And if I look for a word that I can see is in there like ideology, it doesn't find that word because to Adobe, this is just a picture. Now, 
depending on what um, software you're using, you might be misled into thinking that your uh, document actually does contain text. Like I was just doing this in Max Preview um, and it actually was recognizing some text. That's because Max Preview itself is doing some optical character recognition. But what you want to really make sure is that when you upload this PDF to ChatGPT, ChatGPT is going to be able to understand all the words that are within it. So what we want to do is we want to turn this image PDF into a text PDF where the text that's within um, the PDF is actually extractable, understandable to ChatGPT. Now, luckily there's some really good tools for doing this. If you just Google um, PDF OCR, the first tool or one of the first tools that's gonna come up is uh, PDF 24's OCR tool. This is one I've used uh, for these purposes. It works really, really good, completely free. Just choose the file, grab that PDF, Let's see it imports it. Make sure you choose your correct language. For our purposes, it's English. Um, if you're using a different language, obviously choose a different language. This will um, improve the quality of the results that you get. Um, all of the other um, defaults are fine. You can just click Start OCR, and it'll go through the OCR process. And you can sort of see here it's optimizing the pages, and then it's going to um, find the text that's within it. And I'm going to jump forward here so you don't have to wait and watch this with me. Okay, we're just finishing up now. You can sort of see how many words it's recognizing in the text. That's great. That's going to give ChatGPT a lot to work with. Uh, once the process is done, it's going to prompt me to download this PDF. And I'm going to call this uh, Hitler OCR text. And crucially now, if I open this in Adobe, uh, we now have, you can see I can double click on words. I can see them here. Uh, I should have more success in searching for things. This is now ready to go uh, for ChatGPT. And so for the next purposes of doing what we're going to do in ChatGPT, we're going to use that OCR version of the file, not the original one, because then ChatGPT Chat GPT is going to understand all of the text uh, that is in there. Okay, I will put uh, all the text of this prompt in the show notes, so you can just copy and paste it from there. But I just wanted to go through a little bit of um, uh, what's going on here. Uh, I'm not going to read out the whole thing, but um, I sort of experimented a lot uh, with um, the text here, and I've highlighted some key parts that I think are important. Um, I think, first of all, just sort of telling ChatGPT you're a quiz bot. Your whole purpose here is to quiz uh, a grade 11 student in Surrey, British Columbia, Canada, help prepare them for an upcoming quiz. Um, I set this to give uh, the student short answer and fill in the blank questions. I think these are a little bit more challenging. I think when you're studying, um, it sort of forces you to actually come up with an answer a bit better than a multiple choice question. So I think it's good. But if you feel more comfortable using multiple choice questions, true false questions, you can just change the text there. One of the things that I found uh, most challenging uh, when creating this quiz bot in um, ChatGPT is that it would kind of ask the same questions over and over again, especially if you sort of started it from scratch. So I just included some language here, and this seems to help a little bit. It's not perfect, but basically sort of encouraging ChatGPT to sort of create some randomization based on the time of the day and try to randomly pick things um, from uh, different parts of the course material. Um, it also recommends looking at the questions that have been previously asked to make sure that they're not asked again. So that way, if you do sort of five questions and then another five questions, hopefully they'll be different. Some general language here to ensure the questions um, cover a broad range of topics. Um, specifying to ask the questions one at a time. If you don't do that, uh, ChatGPT will often sort of give you all five questions at the same time, which we don't want. Um, and then just sort of some stuff about, you know, like if, you know, the student answers the question wrong, provide some gentle corrective feedback explaining what they got wrong, uh, if they got it right, offer them praise, tell them good job. Um, and then there's also some material here, which I think is really important when we're talking about preparing for test material, uh, to really stress to ChatGPT that we want you to use the document that we just uploaded, right? So this is something I found particularly challenging in all the stuff that I've been working with in uh, ChatGPT when it comes to learning and teaching and stuff like that, is that ChatGPT knows so much about so many things that it very quickly will try to rely on its general knowledge, right? And so ChatGPT knows a lot about World War II, but if my uh, high school student, my, my, my son is studying a particular chapter in a particular book about Hitler or about Mussolini or about Stalin, the test is going to be on that chapter in that book, right? Not everything that's out there about uh, Stalin or, or Hitler or Mussolini. Um, and uh, there's often a lot of um, 
sort of specific things that your instructor is teaching in a particular way, and they're going to quiz you on the things that are particular to what um, they're teaching you, right? And so you really want to make sure that these quiz questions are based very strictly on uh, the course materials in your course. And so I've just got some language here about, you know, uh, making sure that your questions are only based on the uploaded course material. They should never be based on your general knowledge. So um, we basically just take that language and we copy it over to ChatGPT and we attach our OCR document. Okay, so Hitler OCR text. And then we just go ahead and run it. And you can see here, there was a little prompt there that says reading the documents, that's what we want. It means it's looking at the documents, it's basing the questions on that. Uh, one characteristic of a totalitarian government is the use of extreme blank to control the population. I'm gonna say control. says that's correct. And then it does this nice thing where it sort of explains it a little bit, it expands a little bit on it. So you're not just being quizzed, you're sort of learning a little bit more. What event marked Adolf Hitler's rise to dictatorial power by granting him emergency powers in 1993? I'm just gonna say, I don't know. Okay, it said the rise to dictatorial power was the passing of the Enabling Act in 1933. So this is a good example where, this is a two-stage process. One stage is this quiz uh, interface, right? Uploading the course materials, giving it very clear instructions about how to quiz you or, or your kid uh, about the course content. But then what I've encouraged um, my son to do is when you get a question wrong, then it's time to switch over to the other mode, uh, which is the tutor mode. Um, and that uses the exact same course materials, but it's more to have a conversation about the course content. Okay, so in this case, it's you are the tutor bot designed to help a grade 11 student in Surrey, British Columbia learn about material for an upcoming test. Uh, again, I'll put these in the show notes. You can just copy and paste them. I've bolded this section here because I think it's helpful to tell ChatGPT uh, a little bit about yourself. Uh, or about uh, your kid if they're if they're using it. Um, you know, if they have particular learning disabilities, you could mention that here. If they struggle with particular topics more than others, you could mention that here. You can also mention hobbies. It depends on the course content, but sometimes if you mention things like hobbies or things they're interested in, it will actually use those um, topics to provide analogies that might help them to understand things. So you can kind of play around a little bit like that. It just says begin every session by asking, what would you like to learn more about today? Um, Again, the, re the real emphasis here is making sure you're searching the knowledge base, searching the document that you've uploaded, as opposed to just um, you know um, basing it on general knowledge about the particular topic. We really wanna make sure that it's tightly linked to uh, the course material that you're learning in your course that you're gonna be quizzed on. And then this was some language um, that I got uh, more or less from a, a post by Ethan Mollick about just some general advice to ChatGPT about how to be a helpful tutor, explain the concepts in a simple way, um, you know, uh, get uh, the student to repeat it back to you, to check their understanding, sort of basic kind of good uh, tutor behavior. So we just copy that into a new window and attach the same OCR text. And then it'll say, what would you like to learn more about today? So I'm gonna ask about the Enabling Act. Um, but before I do that, one of the cool things about the TutorBot uh, is you can use it on your phone with the ChatGPT app. And one of the nice things about the ChatGPT app is it has an option of having uh, voice. And and uh, my son has found this particularly useful because he doesn't wanna be typing, typing, typing you know, into the app, but he can just, you know, have these basic instructions uploaded. I've already just switched over here to the same conversation on the app, and I can now press the um, interactive chat window, and I can just ask my questions um, through voice and, and have a conversation uh, with ChatGPT. And I'm just going to do a brief version of that so you get an idea. Can you tell me a little bit about the Enabling Act in Germany? The Enabling Act was a crucial law that helped Adolf Hitler turn Germany into a totalitarian state. Passed in March 1933, it gave Hitler's government the power to make laws without needing approval from the Reichstag, Germany's parliament, or the president. 
This law marked the end of democracy in Germany and was a key step in Hitler consolidating his power as dictator. Why do you think it was important for Hitler to silence opposition before passing the Enabling Act? So that he wouldn't have anyone trying to stop him? Exactly. By silencing his opposition, especially the communists, Hitler removed the voices that could have challenged him. Okay, so you get a bit of an idea. Um, it's more of a conversation back and forth. Um, so um, either you sort of allows you to dig deeper into the topic that you're struggling with, uh, or your kid is going to be able to have kind of a conversation. Um, and you can sort of see the way that the interface works um, based on the instructions that have been given. It kind of explains something, but then it requires the, the student to uh, repeat things back in their own words. You know, this, this sort of typical method, which has been shown to really help uh, understanding. So um, what I really encourage my son to do, and I think, you know, if you're studying yourself or, or if you're helping your kids study is sort of jump between quiz and tutor. Quiz until you get something wrong, then jump to tutor, ask it to explain something to you. Once you feel like you've understood it, go back to the quiz. Um, and the nice thing about um, these uh, sessions on ChatGPT is you can just jump, jump back on them. And, and usually, you know, based on the content, these are already called Tutor and Quizbot, but you could, you know, rename this, you know, uh, World War II Quiz, and then you could rename this one World War II Tutor, and you can kind of just leave these open, right? And, and you can kind of go back and forth whenever you need. Now, in this case, uh, because I know most people just have the free version of ChatGPT, I've just done it as sort of an individual um, chat window, a chat thread that you can then, you know, jump into as needed. Um, but you can also, if you have the paid version of ChatGPT, you can actually um, go in here and um, create a custom GPT. Uh, so if you go to Explore GPTs here, uh, you can create a custom GPT. And in the configure window, you could just call this something like, you know, Quizbot, and basically just take the exact same instructions here and then upload in the knowledge section for upload files that OCR PDF and then this will essentially uh, work the same way I'll often create a conversation starter that just says quiz me right you can click on quiz me And it'll work the same way. Uh, if you have the paid version of uh, ChatGPT, one of the nice things about doing it this way is that this interface then works. And when you've got new material to study, so you're now studying for the next test that's based on the next chapter, you can just delete that and upload the, the scanned version of the next chapter. And because the uh, instructions are generic enough, they're not specifically tied to a particular topic, it'll just quiz you on the new material and, it, and it's a nice uh, clean interface that you can use. Um, and then you can just um, access uh, that quiz bot uh, from the left hand side window here. So that's basically it. Um, you know, I, I found this to work really, really well with my son. Uh, I think it could work really well for other people. The basic idea is just basically making sure that you're uploading the specific course materials uh, that you're going to be quizzed on, that you're going to have a test on, and then creating these two interfaces, one for quizzing, one for tutoring, and using them in concert to sort of help prepare uh, for the test that's upcoming. Um, it kind of, you know, allows you, and you can, you know, do it a lot of it on your phone. Um, you know, I, I showed you the, the talking interface uh, for the tutor, but you can also do quizzes on your your phone as well. So, you know, you're sitting on the bus, you want to just quickly quiz yourself on something that you know you've got a test upcoming. Uh, it's always there. It's always accessible. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful. Um, if you like this video, all the regular stuff, like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff. If you have any questions or your own experiences using ChatGPT as a study aid, uh, please put them in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Thanks.